Good morning, everyone. Oh, let me just say hello, everyone. My name is Vera James, and um, I welcome you all to the Ask the Pediatricians live show today. We'll be having Dr. Bemisola Boyede, our pediatric consultant, and she'll be taking us on this um, very important topic, fever in children. Dr. Boyede, you're welcome to the show. Yeah, good morning, Vera. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on Axe Pigeons Live. My pleasure to be here. Good morning. You're welcome, ma'am. So, how are you this morning? I'm good. All right, good. Okay, With, without um, wasting so much of our time, we'll go into what we had here for today. Today, we'll be talking on um, fever in children. As usual, Dr. Boyede, before we go into our question and answer time, would, um, would love you to tell us what do you mean by, I mean, give us an overview of fever in children specifically. Uh, thank you, Vera. Uh, fever in is uh, having high temperature. Uh, so when we measure the temperature and usually it's higher than 37.5 then we say that uh, that child has fever the normal temperature is usually between 36.5 to about 37.5 so anything above the normal temperature the normal body temperature i mean is, to, is referred to as fever okay all right, thank you. Would that be all you want to tell us? But before then, before you continue, Dr. Boyede, let me just speak to the viewers. Viewers, please um, kindly ask your questions. Go on our group page, write your questions, and tell us exactly what you want to know about fever today. Dr. Boyede is here, and she's very, very willing, and she'll be happy to respond to every question you have as regards fever in children. While we wait for your questions to come on, I would want um, Dr. Boyede to, to um, talk more. I know she has lots of, um, she has an outline to share with us today. So, we'd love to take your questions. Please let, let's ensure that your questions are brief and to the point, so we don't have to spend so much time reading your questions. Okay, Dr. Boyede, over to you again. Okay, so thank you very much, Vera, um, and our viewers. Uh, fever is one of the commonest uh, complaints that uh, mothers have and uh, this is because, um, I mean, it, there are many things that could cause fever in children and today I will just give a brief um, overview of causes of fever in children and then what a mother should do if you think that your child has fever and, and then what next to do after that. Okay, so let's start with what causes fever. You will feel hot as well, and you will measure that and think, oh, this child has fever. And all you need to do in such a case is just to take out the uh, excessive clothes. And this is actually common in new babies. Because those of us in, this, uh, in Nigeria and some other African countries, we believe that newborn babies are too fragile. They should not, have, um, they should not be exposed. And so we have this tendency to always swaddle them and they're always wearing thick clothes with tabs, meeting socks and all that, which there's really nothing wrong with it. But sometimes when the weather is hot, this clothing can be excessive and such babies will have high temperature and all you need to do is to take off those excessive clothes. So I always tell mothers dress according to the weather. So if you are living in in an area that is uh, temperate, very cold, you need to put on more clothing. But in area that is also warm, you, you you dress according to the weather. And there's a way to know. All you need to do is to feel the palm or the soles of the feet of the child. If they are cold to touch, then most likely that child is cold and you need to put on more clothing. If they are warm to touch or the child is sweaty and all that, then you, it means the clothing is too much and you can reduce it a little bit, less, more of cotton waste and stuff. So these are things that can cause fever that are actually due to our own uh, things, our own, uh, <laughs> like, 
what we call iatrogenic, what you cause by yourself. Okay. But sometimes fever could be a symptom of a disease process on the, going on in the child. And that will now make the child to, to body temperature to rise up because the body is trying to fight whatever infection, whatever disease is going on. And in that process, the core temperature will rise and that will manifest as fever. So fever itself is not a diagnosis. It's not a disease on its own. It's just a symptom or a warning sign for us to know that this child is... Um, something is going on that we need to pay attention to and so almost so many things can cause fever uh, in our own environment we talk of things like malaria which is one of our commonest causes of fever in children uh, because we are living in malaria endemic environment I'm talking about Nigeria now and most of the African countries other causes of fever include infections and this infection could be any part of the body and sometimes the child will also have other symptoms that will help to localize where that infection is coming from so if the child is coughing for example it could point to a chest infection if the child is sneezing and all that it could point to an upper respiratory tract infection if the child has some toothache and all that it could be a pointer to a dental uh, infection if the child has red eyes and stuff like that it could be a pointer to in fact, I conjunctivitis or things like that. If the child is having abdominal pain or is having watery stool, it could be a pointer to something going on in the digestive system or in the gastrointestinal tract, and so on and so forth. If the child has a wound, you know, it could be something on the skin and all that. So sometimes we can, based on the other symptoms, know where the, the other causes of that fever is coming from. But there are times we also have fever that's just a fever, and we don't even know where the fever is coming from. It could just be an infection going on in the bloodstream, what we call sepsis or septicemia and all that. And sometimes it could be those internal organs that we really need to do a lot more uh, investigation for us to know that there, there are things that are causing this fever. So we could have things like so infection. But there are also other causes of fever, like... Uh, cancers and things that are a little bit rarer or what we call autoimmune disease so there are so many causes of fever so it is important for mothers to know that fever is just a sign and we need to now know what is the underlying cause of the fever even sometimes some immunization can also induce fever in children and so that is one of the reasons why sometimes after immunization we always tell mothers that as one of the side effects of these vaccines this child may have fever and this is what you need to do. So I, I will just stop there in terms of the causes of fever. The most important thing for one is for mothers to identify that a child has fever. Because even though the fever is a pointer to a particular disease itself, there are also some complications that come with that fever on its own. In other words, so if the fever is too high, for example, a child can convulse. So we have what we call febrile convulsion, or even the convulsion could also be a sign of infection, that that fever is due to infection in the brain. But sometimes, even when there's no infection in the brain, when the fever is so high, some children will actually convulse. And this can be very frightening to the mothers and to, you know, to the children. I, I mean, to everyone around and people start to think and all that. So we don't want fever to go too high. That is number one. So it's important for mothers to identify fever. And I always say, every mother, you must have a thermometer at home. So those days we have uh, when it's no uh, uh, this type of thermometer that is difficult for unless those who yes, are trained yes, nurses yes, can read yes. it. But nowadays we have the digital thermometers, Very so easy. you yeah. can look at it and you could you could read it off immediately, and you already know the figures I gave you. Normal temperature is thirty six point five to thirty seven point five. So if it's more than thirty seven point five, then that is fever. And then, so that is the first thing you must identify the fever. Then the second thing is to deal with the fever itself, to deal with the, uh, 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 to bring down the fever so that the child doesn't convulse. And that is where we use our uh, things like uh, antipyretics, like paracetamol. And like I always said again, every mother must always have paracetamol at home. I mean, that is one of those things that we doctors and pediatrician we don't quarrel with you. 
you we okay. have so we can self medicate with paracetamol okay. yes of course it's not you can use paracetamol if your child has fever after you check the temperature you can give and always check to make sure you give the right dose because sometimes mother does think every child is five meals every child is not going to take five meals of paracetamol True. Even if you don't know the weight of the child, you know the age of the child. And most manufacturers will tell you, this zero to three months, give this, uh, six months to one year, give this. So they give you an idea of what you can give. And then, for summer doesn't have to be, you give once and that is all. When you give, you check again whether the temperature is coming down or not. If it has not come down, you can actually repeat it every six hours or even every eight hours, and that will be still fine. Now, if after you bring down the temperature, the fever keeps coming back. Uh, there are other methods of bringing down temperature apart from paracetamol. You can also use um, what we call tepid sponging. You put uh, like a towel in normal temperature water, normal tap water kind of temperature, and you just rub it on the child's body. Or you can even give the child a bath. Or then you can allow the fan to blow the child just to cool down his body's temperature. And after that, you will be check your temperature again and keep monitoring. But usually, if the fever doesn't go within 24 to 48 hours, it means there may be something underlying that fever. And then that is where you need to now take the child to the hospital to know for the doctor to see the child and to know the underlying cause of the fever. And once they treat that, then that child will be fine. Okay, so and what we want mothers to do is to identify fever early. If the first day treatment, if the fever is not going within two, at least one to two days, then take the child to the hospital. All right, thank you Don't very much. Don't try to you know the cause. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. Okay, speaking of um, tepid sponging, can you just explain the technique behind that? Because okay, let me give an example. Um, someone was telling me yeah. some time ago that if you pour the water on the child's head, I mean, the child might convulse. So I, I want to draw the line there. Is that a myth or is there some kind of technique you want to share with the viewers? Okay, so like I've told you already, a child who has fever can convulse when the fever is high. So it is so sometimes mothers do a lot of associations that for those of us who are at the pediatrician, we know that those associations. So a child already has high pressure, is going to convulse anyway. So maybe it was just presented, it was the time you were now pouring the water that the child convulsed. It is not the water that caused the child to convulse, it's the it's the, it's the temperature itself. So it, it has nothing to do with the water. So you can give the child a bath, you can pour water from the head to the body, have a proper bath. He, he, if, if for those of us who did science, you remember what we call conduction, convection, and radiation yeah, methods yeah, of heat transfer. <laughs> yeah. So what tempest sponging and what's uh, giving a bad dose is that when you put water on that child, the the water will evaporate, or uh, you know, and in that process will take off some of those heat. So you are not supposed to dry the body. You are supposed to leave some water on the body, and that heat, the temperature will will kind of eat up the water and in the process of the water converting from liquid to gas, it will take some it takes that heat away. So that's the process. And that's why you keep doing it because when some have gone, you put you keep tepid sponge. So tepid sponge is not something you just do back back five one minute and you are down. You it's a continuous it can be very continuous and you keep doing it. And that's why sometimes using multiple methods is good. So you are tepid sponging, you've given a bath, you put on your fan, you give paracetamol is very more effective than just doing one especially if the temperature is quite high when we talk of things like 39 40 that is very high temperature that one you need to really be more aggressive with all the methods to bring down the fever but if it's just um mild fever then you can just do one method and that will still be fine all right thank you so, so it's much not the type of that bring down the things uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. All right, viewers um, at home, we expect to see your questions rolling in now. Dr. Boyd is here to take them. Dr. Boyd, there's a question for you. Yes, good morning, doctor. Please, what can be the cause of fever in a child after being treated for malaria? That's from Mary is sharing. Okay, thank you, Mary, for your question. So, like I said, I've already told you all the possible causes of fever. Now, the mistake, and I know where your question is coming from. <laughs> Sometimes I always know where mothers are coming from. Now, mothers always assume, especially in Nigeria, that every fever 
is malaria. In other words, in fact, they always say malaria fever. So for most Nigerian mothers, they think the only thing that causes fever in children is malaria. And so because of that, once a child has fever, they, they don't even go to the hospital, they just buy anti-malaria and treat. And so they wonder that after they've treated malaria, the child is still having fever. So if you remember my introduction now, you, uh, we, if you are here, then I've already said that there are 1,001 causes of fever. So malaria is not the only one. So if you treat malaria and the child is still having fever, it means there are, well, let's say two, two or three possibilities. Number one, the fever is not due to malaria. It's, there may be other things that could cause fever that are not malaria. Number two, you may even, let's say it's even malaria, you may not have treated the malaria properly because sometimes some mothers don't know how to treat the malaria. And three, it could be the, the drug you use is the, the malaria is resistant to it. But let me just say half of the time, most time is the, the child fever is not due to malaria. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dr. Boyd. I saw another I can question. Another okay, question that, yeah. So when a child is having fever and hands or feet are cold and the, the, the child is properly feeling cold and yet it's running fever, I can't see the rest of the question. Uh, uh, say, what should you do or something like that? That's from Busayo. Uh So when a child is having fever, most of the time the, the core temperature is, is, is high. In other words, the body shuns blood, you know, away from the, uh, the what we call the peripheries, the hands and the feet. And that is why the hands and the feet are cold. But the child is actually not cold. The child is actually having a fever and it's hot. So you don't ignore the hands and feet that are cold. You should actually um, uh, make sure you do all the other methods of bringing down the fever. Sometimes some children have what we call rigor, especially for those who have malaria. So you yes. can wrap them up a little bit, but don't forget that they will also get very hot as well. So you need to do the, when they are shivering, you can wrap them up, but you also see give them something to bring down the core uh, temperature, which is the fever. Okay. Okay, there's another question for you, Dr. Bilyadi. Okay, this question is say what can be done to bring down fever if you don't have a um, paracetamol handy. So from okay, yes, I've already said you can tap a sponge, you can give a bath, you can also uh, put on the fan, expose, remove the clothing, expose the child. So these are other methods you can use. And paracetamol is not the only drug that can also bring down fever. You can use something like uh, ibuprofen as well. It's also a very uh, good antipyrexic, yeah, you can use. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Boyedi. I was just thinking, um, sometimes we have questions like this from members of the Asi Pediatrician, and they say, my child's head is very hot, and the body is normal. I mean, I feel my child has fever. Usually yeah, we yeah, answer yeah, yeah. that, use a thermometer. <laughs> Please help us clarify yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, because if you look even at our intro picture, you can see that there was a picture of a mother yes, touching yes. the head of the child to know whether the... Because that is how uh, traditionally we feel for fever. So we use our hand to touch and all that. Now, I always tell mothers, it is because your hand is not sensitive enough. It's not an instrument. That is why they created a thermometer. Because if you are hot yourself and you feel out, you will think the child is hot. So if you think you, it's okay to feel like you think the child is hot, please use the thermometer to check so that you will know. And, and I tell them the instrument in your hand. So... If you if the child if you think the child is warm, use your uh, your thermometer to check. If the thermometer is saying it's normal, then you just relax. You can recheck again, uh, unless you are really think the child is really very hot. The other parts of the body are also hot, and you think maybe your thermometer is faulty, then you can get another thermometer and try. But if the thermometer is really normal, then there's really nothing for you to worry. Now, the the different parts of the body are doing things at different times. So a part of the body that is actively working at a particular time will be warmer, 
not having fever but warmer so when you have still finished eating put your hands on your tummy it will feel warmer because that time digestion is going on so a lot of blood is being pulled into your tummy when your child is thinking or doing active um things that involve using the brain or eating things like that their head may feel warmer that's why babies are breastfeeding sometimes you see them sweating because they're using a lot of so a lot of blood is supplied so the way the body works is that the part that is working gets more blood supply so sometimes they can feel differentially warmer than the rest of the body but it doesn't mean they have fever and that is why even when you now use the thermometer it will still be a normal temperature so mother should stop worrying my head the head is not the hands are okay as long as the body temperature is fine then and there are many ways you can check your fever you can use you can check this in the mouth you can check on the armpits you can even do it in the rectum so there are many ways for checking um temperature using thermometer yeah thank you dr boyde mothers um, please put your mind to rest you've heard from dr boyde on that already so you should get your thermometer and make sure you have that at home um, I saw another question. Please, could, I, could you please up scroll that? So, yes. Georgina okay. is saying, my daughter and son. Yes, have been uh, Georgina fever. is asking that at yeah. Go uh, ahead. At doctor. midnight, but can't say, Georgina, like I said, you are not the you are not the doctor. Uh, so if your child is having fever and midnight, you didn't tell us how long. But if it's going beyond more than 24, 48 hours, you need to take them to the hospital so that the doctors can examine them. I, I think mothers, we we are all, I always like to call us the first doctor, home doctors and all that, but sometimes we need to know when to drop our mothers, the doctors at. You need to know where your first step stop and where the professional needs to take over. Because we see this a lot, especially in Nigeria, most mothers come to the hospital legs because they want to treat the child yourself. So your child is not, you are not the doctor. So if you're giving your parents someone, you've done what you can do, they want day to the children are not better, please take them to the hospital. We have ex centers, we have general hospitals, we have our private hospitals, and you can take your children so and and they will be fine. So uh, that's what I recommend for you to take those children to the hospital because we could be talking pneumonia here, we could be talking so many other things. As the earlier children are seen and treated, the better uh, they are for them. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dr. Boyde, I'd like to take you back a little. We talked about the use of paracetamol and ibuprofen. So um, I would like you to clarify that. Do you, do you advise that parents should give paracetamol and ibuprofen at the same time? Or is it alternatively or something? So please clarify. Okay, thank you, Vera. Usually I recommend one at a time. Uh, so in other words, if you have given paracetamol, that is fine. You don't need to also give ibuprofen. But if you don't have paracetamol, you want to give ibuprofen, that is also fine. Though we doctors sometimes we, we use it too when we are dealing with very high fever, but I think that should be left for professionals to do. For at the level of the mothers, I would just say use one. And you can use your prestamol, you can give up to every six hours. In other words, you can give four times in a day. The same thing for your ibuprofen. Okay. So, Anya who favor is asking in a situation where the child vomits the drug continuously during the fever, what can one do? Yes, fever, that is actually a very uh, typical scenario of so very sick children. Sometimes very sick children cannot. Um, uh they, they find it difficult to tolerate drugs so they vomit a lot so that is why there are other options to bring down the fever so you can tap a sponge you can expose you can give a bath and all that however you know like we said fever is just a symptom so the underlying cause of the fever also needs to be treated and to treat that that is why we suggest that you may need to take the child to the hospital and if you take a child to the hospital the doctor prescribe oral drugs and the child keeps vomiting. It's, it's an emergency. A child keep down drugs. It's an emergency. You need to take the child back to the hospital because the child is losing water. The child is uh, at risk of hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, and all that. And the child is still not yet getting treatment for the underlying cause of the fever. So all those things need to be sorted on time so that the child can uh, can, can get well. And the way we do it is that we put the child on 
uh, what we call intravenous treatments. We put on drip, we put on the, we give the drops through the vein. Then when the vomiting has stopped and the child is able to tolerate the oral drugs, then we can switch over to the, um, we can switch over to the, um, to the oral drugs again. So when the child is no longer vomiting. Okay. Tolu Lopo is asking. Yeah. Should I let me read that? Yeah, yeah. don't look have answered your question already. <laughs> it said what because of a child running temperature at night, but majorly only on the head. So look where have you checked the temperature with the thermometer? If the child if the thermometer because like Vera has asked the question, if you think the head is the only one or check with the thermometer first. Because most of the time, there's really nothing wrong. I mean, the child doesn't have fever. You are the one thinking the child's head is hotter than the rest of the body. But as long as the child's temperature is not above 37.5, then the child is fine. So sometimes, mothers, I hope we don't overtreat our children when there's really nothing wrong with them. So if you think, that, so if you check and it's fine, that's fine. But if you, if you check and the child's temperature is above 37.5, 39, please take the child to the hospital for proper treatment. Thank you, Dr. Boyede. Um, viewers would like you to ask your questions. We're still live, and Dr. Boyede is here to attend to them one after the other. So could you please scroll on the next um, question? Let's see what we have. Okay, Dr. Boyede, would it be out of place if we ask a question on um, low fever here? Um, let's, because yeah, we understand yeah. that um, you have what, said what do, what do you mean by low fever? There's nothing. <laughs> Uh -huh. There's nothing called low fever. What you I mean, mean lower temperature. Thank you, thank you. Sorry, sorry, that was a blunder. Okay. Lower temperature, like 35.4, 35.6. I've seen yeah. people ask questions like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what do we call yeah. that? How do so, we... we call it hypothermia in, in medical jargons? Hypothermia. So, hypothermia is also, in fact, we are more worried about it sometimes than fever. So, if you but number one, you need to make sure your thermometer is working. Because sometimes if your thermometer is not working, you can get false low temperatures and all that. But if the child actually feels cold to touch and the temperature is reading anything below 36, that child is having hypothermia. And it's also a serious problem because it will also get it in some very serious uh, illnesses and stuff like that. So what you do is to wrap up the child, keep the child warm, put on salts, put on, this is commoner in the newborn babies and all the yeah. babies below one year, they can actually go very cold and they can, it can kill. So you keep them warm, wow. wear socks, wear uh, green things, put on the cap, wear thicker uh, layers of clothing and then check the temperature again, whether you are able to bring it up. Give out, uh, if you sit on breast milk, breast milk, breast milk is at very high uh, normal body temperature. If it's a child of formula, you can give your uh, child who is already eating, you can give hot food, hot drink, hot drink. When I say hot drink, not alcohol, I mean a drink that is warm, like cocoa, cocoa beverage or something that is warm, uh, and then check the temperature again. That is your own process of rewarming the child. But if the child is now yes, better with all that, then you need to take the child to the hospital. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Boyedi. Um, before we continue, we'll just take a short commercial now. Being a great mom isn't just about playing with your kids or providing toys for them. It's also about knowing when they're not feeling well and the medicine that's right for them. When my daughter has a fever, I give her Panda Paracetamol Drops, specially designed for the relief of pain and feverish conditions in infants and children. It's very gentle on my daughter's stomach and body so that she gets stronger and healthier. With Panda Paracetamol at hand, I get to spend more time with my little girl. Feel good, get better with Panda Paracetamol. Feel better with Panda Paracetamol, another quality product from Afrap Chem Limited. Okay, welcome back. Um, we have another question. I saw one question. Yes, good. Okay, uh, thank you, doctor. Is it right for a child or five-year-old to be put to sleep 
my doctor in the hospital because the fever is so high. Linda, Linda, I'm not really sure a doctor will put the child to sleep because of high fever. So you may need to actually ask your doctors what they are trying to do. We usually don't put children to sleep. We pediatricians don't like putting children to sleep for any reason unless there's something wrong. But let me also quickly say that a child who is having eye fever can go into coma. So in other words, a child who has malaria, they can have what we call cerebral malaria, they can have meningitis, they can go unconscious because of the underlying illness. So it is not the drug of the doctors that is putting the child to sleep. It is the condition itself. So, and sometimes this can be very confusing for a mother because you are just looking, you don't understand, you think the doctor gave a particular drug and after that the child falls asleep and you think it's a drug. So it's good to always have a conversation with the professionals managing your child, let them know, ask them. I always tell mom to always ask questions. What are you doing? What did you give? What is he supposed to do? You, it is your right. Of course, you don't have to do it when they are trying to save your child. When they finish, you cannot ask questions so that you don't also disrupt the treatment process. So I, I doubt a doctor will sedate a child who is having fever. They will give something to stop the fever, but the underlying cause of fever can also make the child go unconscious. Yeah. All right. So Ilamo Elizabeth Samuel is asking, uh, when the end is I think I've answered this question like several times. Yeah. And just check the temperature. And, and I think most Nigerian moms, uh, always think oh well, the head is always hot and the rest of the body is fine. Just check the temperature and that will help you to know what to do. So don't rely on your arm. It's not uh, reliable. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, viewers, um, I would enjoin you to invite your friends. Please share this video. Um, click on the share button and share on your page and all of that so your friends could join us Being and ask their questions. Dr. Boyd is here and we are still on for another 20 minutes or so. So please share this video. Thank you. We'll take the next question. Okay, uh, something, sometime come out of it. Okay, uh, Esther, I always ask questions related to the topic we are discussing. I, I can't see any parts of fever in your question. So, but if you have taken your child to hospital several times, I always want to know which hospital and who did you say. I would prefer you take the child to a hospital that's a pediatrician. So the teaching hospitals are actually, uh, they always have the best of the specialists in any field. Even in the pediatric, they also have the super specialists. So you may want to take your child to the children's emergency room of the closest teaching hospital to you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, a few questions are coming on now. I'll just take them. Linda is the, okay. J Jane Mike Essien. She says, "Good job, doctor. Please, ma. I read there in this group benefits of exclusive breastfeeding. This is a long one, so we'll have to take some time to read this. And one of them is that the child will be free from sicknesses. But my child tends to have fever often, and I took her to the hospital last month." which test was conducted and everything was negative although she was treated and the fever came down but after three weeks which is now which is now she's having fever too and i don't know what to do now my house is baby proof but i still don't know the cause of fever in her and her fever is always on the side from 40 to 40 40.2 wow. did you get that question so Yes, I did. I did. Thank you. Right. Uh, what's the name of the mom again? Uh, Jane. 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 Okay, thank you, Jane, for your question. Okay, so um, I'll, let me clarify. When we say that uh, exclusive breastfeeding protects your children, it doesn't mean that those children can never be sick at all because there are different things that could cause a child to be sick. But generally, children who are on exclusive breastfeeding are usually were protected against infection or that. Now, if you've gone to the hospital and the did test and it's come out negative, then most likely the cause of, uh, is a viral infection. Viral infection tends to, uh, most of when we draw our blood, tends to 
may come out normal. So sometimes we have viruses causing infection and all that. So that is number one. And number two, if you're ch there are other causes of fever in children that are rare causes. So when you go to a, a average hospital, we look for the common things. We don't look for things that are rare. So we look for infection, we look for malaria, be sick, because those are the commonest causes of fever. So, but sometimes some children have other uh, sinister causes, autoimmune diseases, so many other things that may not be very apparent. So for such cases, you need a specialist to stay. So if your child is having fever frequently, what we call recurrent fever, and they've, they've seen the, the, the general doctors or the medical officers have checked for malaria, they check for infections, they pick out anything, then it is time to see the specialist. So I would recommend you go to um, a teaching hospital. In fact, there's an entity we call fever of unknown origin or fever of undetermined origin. When children have fever and all our initial uh, tests always come out negative, we can't find out having that fever. Sometimes we need to really look and look and look. And look. So, but that one is at the specialist level. So please, Jane, take your child to a teaching hospital for further evaluation. And don't feel bad because you're exclusive breastfed and your baby is having, it can happen, but it's not very common, but it does happen. All right. Thank you, Dr. Boyedi. Um, viewers, please, let's streamline our questions to the topic for today. Topic for today is fever in children. I can see some questions um, on nutrition and all of that. We won't be able to take those today. So please turn in your questions on um, fever, basically. All right, Dr. Boyedi. Before we, we get another question, what, um, could you please share with us one of, your, the, 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 one of the most frequent issues you hear as a pediatrician considering fever, fever, fever? Just give us, uh, maybe somebody might want to ask and unfortunately the person is not here um, live. So could you tell us something that we need to know? Okay, uh, so there are some myths that I think I need to correct first. Number one, there are mothers that give their children um, paracetamol every day. Yeah, because they don't want them to have fever. So they, they think, oh, let me quickly prevent it. Please stop. You are damaging the livers of those children. I mean, and I keep telling mothers, there's no drug that is safe. In fact, there's an exam that used to say every drug is a poison. It is the dose that differentiates what is good from what is bad. So please, if you are one of those mothers that give prastamo every day so that your children, because sometimes they, say, they can't talk, I don't know what is causing, I won't know, that. let me just, no, please stop it, it's not all right. Then there are mothers that treat their children for malaria every three months, please stop. You don't have to do that. Because your children are not going to develop immunity against malaria. And when they eventually have that malaria, they are going to have what we call the severe malaria type. And very fatal. Most of the children can die from that. So, no need to treat your children for malaria until they have malaria. For, uh, another point, it is not every fever that is malaria. I, I want the Nigerian mothers especially to get that point very clear. So, if your child has fever, please don't start malaria treatment immediately. Give paracetamol. If the fever persists, take to the hospital. What we recommend now is that doctors should test for malaria first before treating malaria because we are developing a lot of drugs resistance against our common anti-malaria because mother use it anyhow as well. So if your child has fever, one day per stomach, two days is not going, go to the hospital, let them check for the malaria, let them check for infection, let them examine the child and then they can treat properly. And then those of you that also give antibiotics routinely as well. So in other words, the child has fever, you start per stomach, you start anti-malaria, you start antibiotics, please stop. It is, I mean, I've already written something about antibiotic abuse. We need to stop it. And, and those are the reasons why the children keep on having these things and they're developing resistance. So after two days, go to the hospital. That is what we recommend. All right. Thank you. There's another question for you, Dr. Boyd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, a, if it is a viral infection, how is it treated? Because my son is never mad. So, uh, uh, Ufoma, I, you are not the doctor, so I'm not going to tell you how to treat viral infections. So, like I said, take the child to the hospital. The truth of the matter is that viral infection most times don't need any specific treatment. Most of them go on their own. We have only very few viral infections that have specific antiviral medications for them. The majority of viruses, there's no specific treatment, but there are what we call 
supportive treatment, which could be as very important as the definitive treatment. In other words, if a child is having fever, bringing down the fever, supporting nutrition, supporting hydration and all that, they are also important because the child will have complications as a result of the eye fever or dehydration or malnutrition and all that. So even though there are some, some viruses don't have specific drugs, the doctors still need to take care of the other things. Please, let's stop being the doctors all the time as mothers. I think I get a lot of that kind of feedback from some of the questions I'm getting. Take your child to the hospitals. And please don't give me the excuse of there's no money. Go to the government hospital. Most of those government hospitals, your child is going to be seen free and they will write the drugs for you to buy. So it's not as if you are going to pay so much. I understand if it's private, but you can still go to the government hospital. Okay. Okay. Uh, Solution is asking that would exposing the child with fever not lead to cold? I've had such experience with my child ending up run, with runny nose. Okay, Solution, thank you for your question. Number one, a child who has fever, exposing the child will not make the child cold. Of course, I'm not saying go and put the child in the freezer or in the fridge. <laughs> You are just going to expose. The fever will come down. Then when the fever comes down, you put on the clothes back. That is okay. So the child will not get cold. And two, forget the, uh, that is a myth, believing that it is exposure to cold that causes running nose. Running nose is due to viruses. There are viruses. So it's not the exposure to cold that causes them. You understand? Of course, some of those viruses thrive when the weather is cold, in other words, they are common in during cold weather, and sometimes during cold weather, the, the, the protective uh, mechanism that the body has will be slower, so because of that, uh, it, it, it seems we appreciate a lot of, so when we use the word cold, it is not cold, so I think that's where the issue is coming from, because people okay. always talk about running nose as cold, so you think it's about they are feeling cold, somebody can be having running nose, and having colds, but the baby is actually having fever. So it is not that kind of cold. It's just a, well, that's an unfortunate expression. It doesn't mean that somebody is cold and their body is cold. Running nose is a viral infection. It's an acute uh, respiratory, uh, upper respiratory infection. Most of them due to viruses. Okay. Yeah. Linda has another question. Thank you, Doug. So I am a dog in the house, and sometimes these kids just run fever, and yeah. So yeah, Linda, if the fever ends with uh, one single dose of paracetamol, so that's fine. You don't need to worry. That's okay. You don't need to keep on treating. Uh, like I said, there are some infection like viruses, uh, viral infections that will just even go in their home, whether you do anything or not. So if you give one dose of paracetamol, the fever is gone. But please make sure you confirm that fever because sometimes I was going to some of this fever will treat there is no fever in the mm -hmm. first place. <laughs> because maybe the, child, the children have gone and run up and down in the sun and they came back from school, their body is warm. Sometimes just giving them a bath and allowing them to cool down, then you recheck okay. first. You may be surprised if the so-called fever has gone. But if after you check that and if you, then you can give your paracetamol, and if it has gone, that's fine. There's no need for you to worry. But if it persists, that's when you now need to take steps going to the hospital. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. And um, this is getting interesting. I saw another question. Let's have that question from Okwe. Good. No. Uh, I, I can think I'm just seeing the one from Linda. We've taken Linda's one. Okwe's one came in before. Maybe you should read the Okwe's one. Okwe, you can, I mean, Vera, why, why don't you read it? To guess this. Okay, she's saying, hello, doc. Okay. What could be wrong when the child is having fever, yet test results shows no infection, no malaria? Doctor has taken this already, but okay, I she wants to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've answered. So it could be virus infection, it could be other causes of fever that basic food block counts and uh, malaria tests that most doctors will do will not pick up. So, yeah. Children who have urinary tract infection, they will have uh, also, so many things that will cause fever that you will not pick up from. Even dehydration. When children are dry, that's another thing I forgot to mention. When children are not taking enough water and they have dehydration, it's actually one of the commonest causes of fever in children as well. And for that, you don't even need to give paracetamol. All you need to do is to make sure the children take a lot of fluid. And so, even when you are treating, when you take a child's fever and you're giving paracetamol and all those things, 
please make sure you also give fluids a lot of water because dehydration is also a cause of fever yeah, and like one of the mothers had most of those children are also vomiting they are Sometimes they could be stolen, so they could be dehydrated. And even for, for when you take such children to the hospital, all we do first is to rehydrate them. And when we rehydrate them, the fever just go on its own. So it's not all the fever that needs pumping drugs into the children. Yeah. So make sure you've taken care of the simple ones first and let the doctors let us do with the others. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Boyedi. Um, I like I like our viewers to ask questions. We still have time, and please make your questions related. I can see all of the questions on the screen. Uh, basically, breastfeeding and other related questions. Please streamline your questions to the topic for today's live show. It's fever. Yeah, right. Let me just uh, tell, let me just tell those because some of them may not know about us, the pediatrician. So for those of you who ask questions that are not related to the topic. You can go to our Facebook group, Active Pediatrician. If you go to www.facebook slash groups slash apps, the P A S K T H E P A E D, you will, you will land in Active Pediatrician group. You can join the group, it's free to join, and then you can drop your questions and we answer them. But for the live program, we just want to answer questions related to the topic, okay? Thank you. Okay, Claribel is asking, I just received my 10 month old baby. Malaria, kata cough two weeks ago. Now he's having kata again. Uh, so, Clariba, you didn't really specify whether you saw a doctor or you were the one that did the treatment. So, I would really want to comment about that. So, um, you tried having kata again. There are many reasons why children have acute respiratory infection. I would want to go into that because that's another topic on its own. And there are what we call environmental factors that predispose the child. There are factors that predispose the child to have a recurrent respiratory infection. So things like uh, if you are living in a crowded environment, if there's no ventilation, if you are not breastfeeding, if you know if your baby is not getting good nutrition, if your baby attends daycare and if there's a smoker in the house, if you have the baby close to the kitchen or where you fry oil and stuff or you use firewood for cooking or things like that, generator smokes. So babies that are in those kind of environment will keep on having recurrent uh, respiratory infections, including all those that are not obvious. Especially if your baby goes to crutch as well, because they keep getting it from other children. But that is another topic for another day. So what I will suggest for you is like that kind of a question can be dropped on our group. Go and look at all the risk factors. Try and deal with the risk factors first, and then let's see whether the child continues to have it. And most of viral uh, is always due to viral infection. There's no specific treatment per se. So what you need to do is to address those weak factors, keep your baby warm, and yeah, the baby will be fine. But for if you child have fever with the cancer, you can give paracetamol. And if it's not better, take to the hospital. Yeah, hello, doc. Okay, Bukola, where is asking that a child that temperature is high and the lab uh results show the child have yeah what what's my view uh, that that is the cause of fever so that is on un, that is understandable so you take the child to the hospital and let them be treated another thing i need to warn mothers please stop going to run lab tests on your own a lot of mothers do that and then they will ask me what do i think or ask us because we don't interpret lab results based uh, without the clinical context of the child. It is after a doctor has uh, seen your child and that's what will guide us to ask for a particular laboratory test or not. So if you just go to the lab people and just do tests on your own without seeing the doctors, you know, that, that, that is wrong. So I would advise that you, you, you go see a doctor first and let them treat the child. Thank you. Um, sorry, there's a little bit of um, technical issues here. Dr. Boride, um, okay, can you, are you, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, thank you. All right, um, speaking on fever, the, the, um, you have advised that every mother, every father should have a thermometer at home. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yeah, I can hear you. Go on. Okay, good. Now, when people have 
um, thermometers at home, and then the, the, the resulting effect is that, okay, now I know that my child has fever, maybe 37.9, and then the person gives paracetamol, and then it moves on to 37.8 the next maybe four or five hours. Now, are we still saying that the person should wait for another two days, giving the, using the tepid sponge method, the paracetamol, or the ibuprofen method, before the person sees the doctor, or could you just um, assume that's an emergency and then move on to see the doctor immediately? Okay, thank you, Vera. Okay, so uh, fever, if it is low-grade fever, it's not an emergency. Even if you go to see a doctor, sometimes I mean, if you go to the emergency room, they will see you first, they will see you last. So what I would suggest is that you can give it, you can wait one day. One day is not too much. But if you are the mom, you can, if you are the kind of mother that don't want to wait, you can go to the hospital, of course, you can see your general practitioners and stuff, and they will say you maybe run the test. But like I say, you know, some people are just like maybe dehydration, maybe they, so giving time, if it's a disease, it tends to progress, but if it's nothing, just go. So there's really no point to run around any, but if it's high fever, like you are getting some like 39, 40, 42, those ones, yes, you may not want to wait. You may want to go to the hospital, but if it's something below 38 and it's not so, you can just watch. But if it's anything very high grade, because the risk of conversion is higher in the very high grade fever, then those ones you really want to go to the hospital quite early. Okay, Dr. Busayo is asking, she's saying, hello, doc. Please, what can I do if the fever persists, especially in the evenings? Relapsing fever, they say. And especially after the tests are negative, the child is fine all day and warm in the evenings. I'm sure you have talked about this, but maybe she it, just wants yeah, to. Yeah, being warm in the evening, uh, we tend to get there along with malaria uh, because they have what we call this fever that, you know, that uh, goes up and comes down and all that. So, and lab, lab results sometimes, we don't treat lab results. That's another thing mothers don't understand. We don't treat lab results, we treat the child. So even if I think this child has malaria and my lab result is negative, I can still treat that child. If I have enough clinical uh, eggs on my own to think that this child has, because lab result number one depends on which method. If it's a rapid test, it could be ne it could be falsely negative. If it is a uh, microscopic, uh, for example, it depends on the expertise of the person who is looking at it. And sometimes you see some lab will say take the blood at the peak of the fever, so so that it improves the chances of them picking up things like malaria. And sometimes we need to repeat those blood tests sometimes once or twice before we pick up anything. So that is why it is not good for mothers to just assume they go to the lab and do this. Go to the hospital, they doctor can on clinical ground treat a child even when the lab uh, results are not showing anything significant. So uh, all doctors know that, that we don't treat the lab results, we treat a child. Okay, so Innocent is asking that uh, my son is one plus and the body is hot, but I check temperature and it is 35.6. Number one, Innocent, 35.6 is not fever. That is even below normal temperature. So what if you really think the child is having fever, maybe you may want to use another thermometer. Maybe your thermometer is an instrument, it could be faulty. Especially if you are really convinced that this child, if the child is really hot physically to you and you are checking and you are going to try point go and throw away that thermometer and get another one. Or take the child to the hospital so that they can check the child for you. Yeah. Okay, uh, Okpa is asking what part is the best to check thermometer. Okay, Okpa, you can check the thermometer you can put it in the mouse, you can put it in the ampule, but the, for the rectal, they actually specifically what we call rectal thermometers. So I would rather use the rectal thermometer. And, the most mothers, and most mothers will not be very comfortable doing the rectal one, but everybody is comfortable doing the ampute and everybody is comfortable doing the mouse. And the way it is now is easier. Just wait for the thermometer to beep. It will beep when it has read. So don't just put it. And take it out. That is not correct way to do the temperature measurement. You must leave it for at least one or two minutes, or wait for you to hear that beeping sound. When it is making the beeping sound, and that means it's red. That is when you read it through. Because if you put it immediately, it's still going up, and you have taken it out too early, and you will not know. So make sure you put it there for like two minutes minimum, or 
when it has big, which means as they ride the temperature and then you can check it. So for mothers, I just say do oral or armpits. Leave the rectum for the nurses and the doctors to do so that you are comfortable here. Yeah. But you can do it, it's just that you have, you have to use a special rectal thermometer. Okay, uh, Patricia is saying, my son has been having fever for eight days. Uh, and he has, that's why the medication he has taken anti-malaria injection was admitted on Monday. Vera, okay, can you finish reading the question? Because let I me continue that. Okay, she's yeah. saying um, he has taken anti-malaria injection and was admitted on Monday. Guess the drip given was quinine SO4. Was discharged on Wednesday. Continued with antibiotics mm. via IV. Yet still runs mm. fever. Please, Doc, mm. what is your opinion? He is one year old and this fever is all day, though it fluctuates. <laughs> Uh, Patricia, number one, I'm worried about your child being discharged from the hospital when he's having fever. That doesn't sound quite okay. Uh, I mean, as a pediatrician, if I've admitted a child and I'm going to discharge, I want that child to be, to be fever free for at least not less than 24 hours. So if, you, if, you, if your doctor discharge you and your child is having fever, please go back. Go back to the hospital. That's what I'm going to have to do. Uh, obviously, they treated for malaria. They are also treating for infection, and child is having fever. So go back to them, and maybe they need to do further investigations to know what is causing this fever. But definitely, it is not right to have discharged a child who is still having fever, unless you know sometimes mother has pressed, unless you are the one that insisted on this child because I've been there. I've been there when mother was saying they just want to go, and no matter what the doctor say. But I think most of us doctors, we won't discharge a child with still having fever. Uh, at least we, we, we wait at least for 24 hours, 48 hours of no fever before we send you home. So I don't know why they all read to discharge, you know. All right. So bro, just take a child back. That's what I would recommend. Wow, it's been a very good time. And if you don't have confidence in that hospital, sorry, Vera, just to say, if you don't have confidence in that hospital, you may want to go to a teaching hospital this time around with yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Bim Boyede. It's been a very pleasant morning with you. Um, we'll be rounding off in the next one or two minutes. I would like to just have you give us a closing charge or something. Okay. Thank you so much, mothers. Thank you so much, uh, daddies. And thank you, everyone, who has joined our live broadcast this morning. Um, thank you so much for all the questions. And just to say that even though the program has, is ending, you can still drop your questions, preferably not under the comments because it may be difficult for us to pick it up on time. But if you go to the Ask the Pediatrician Facebook group, you can join the group and then you can drop your question. We answer questions every day, uh, Monday to Saturday. Sunday is our rest day. Um, but you can access the group. There are lots of features. You can go to our units. You can learn uh, things about breastfeeding, about nutrition. You can also read or go to our website, www.articulation.com, and read topical health issues there. And then you can also drop your question on our Facebook group, and we will try to answer your questions as soon as we can. But if your child is sick, please do not come to ask on the Facebook group or on our page. Kindly take the child to the hospital. Our group, our uh, as a pediatrician, is a, is, as a charity where for its education and information, but please always take children that are sick to the hospital because we won't be able to treat them online. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, viewers. We're happy to have you today. Um, please join us next week. We'll be here live at 10 a.m. We'll be happy to have you. Just like Dr. Boride said, please go on our group wall, ask your questions, and we'll be very happy to respond to you. And then if you want to remain anonymous, you could send an email to ask at askthepediatricians.com. Goodbye. Thank you.